we're going to talk about something that gets asked to us all the time, and that is boilerplate. We're going to tell you what boilerplate actually is. Then we're going to tell you some steps to reduce the real boilerplate in your application. And then we're going to show a little bit of the future of NGRX at the end. Boilerplate is any code that you have to repeat throughout your code base with little to no alteration. And so I'm really sorry to report oh. that actions and reducers are not boilerplate. Yeah! <laughs> so then what is the boilerplate that we could actually reduce? Actual boilerplate, yes. Actual boilerplate is things like connecting the reducers to the store. Uh, also registering the fix, whether you're doing this at the root or you're doing, registering the fix lazily, you're still doing the same thing over and over. So what are some strategies for reducing all of this boilerplate that is in an NGRX application? And we're gonna cover making the right decisions about what goes in the store and what doesn't. We're also gonna talk about NGRX schematics, which you're gonna hear about throughout the day. And that allows you to automate some of those common boilerplate tasks that help you generate some of the required infrastructure for writing an NGRX application. So first, the easiest way to reduce the boilerplate is to write less code. And you can write less code by putting fewer things in the store. We have a simple mnemonic called Sherry. You can follow the Sherry principle to determine what state does belong in your store. So shared state is accessed by any components or services. The second principle of Sherry is state that is hydrated. The third principle of Sherry is state that needs to be available when re-entering routes. There is state that needs to be retrieved with a side effect. State that is impacted by other actions or sources. Put state in the store that is changed from other components or services. You do not need to put all of your application state in the store. Only state that follows the Sherry principle. As we've seen, people that use NGRX want to tend to put everything there. And by following these principles, you'll be able to make better decisions about what goes in there. Schematics is a scaffolding library for NGRX. It provides automation for these repetitive tasks, like we mentioned, that aren't unique, in addition to generating a lot of the things that you do use with the NGRX, including actions, reducers, and effects. So here, I've aptly now created a project called NGRX Boilerplate, of course, because y'all love it. And here, I'm just gonna show a few things. I'm gonna show, starting from scratch, how quickly I could get, up, get integrated with NGRX in my app. Next, Mike is gonna talk about NGRX Entity, which also helps you handle uh, those common state shapes we mentioned earlier. NGRX Entity puts you on the right rails for building fast, reactive applications. Last thing I have to pass in is my state, and that's all there was to it, to maintaining this collection. Hmm. That looks like a lot less cold than that boilerplate you talked about earlier. I'm blocking you. So let's recap. We talked about explicitness that gives you type safety, serialization, and easier testing story. We defined boilerplate. Boilerplate. Actions and reducers are not boilerplate, but connecting all these things up really is. And that is because of the concepts that, that we mentioned earlier by using these these actions and types that lets you flow, that types that they flow throughout your app. We also talked about how this kind of state management gives you things that you should really appreciate about NGRX, like immutability and serializability. We also covered the things that hopefully will give you a good direction of what belongs in the store and what doesn't so that you can write less code and still be productive. <laughs>